Shout it loud, hallelujah. Okay, hallelujah. A louder, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Swipe off it, please. Hey, so sing this song loud and clear. What shall I render? What shall I render? What shall I render to thee, O Lord? I will praise your name and shout hallelujah. What shall I render to thee? Oh, what shall I render? What shall I render? What shall I render? Hallelujah! What, what shall, shall I render, render to you, o Lord? Hallelujah! I praise your name and shout Hallelujah! What shall I render to you, o Lord? Hallelujah! What, what shall, shall I render? What shall I render? What shall I render to you, O Lord? Hallelujah! I will praise your name and shout hallelujah. What shall I render to you, O Lord? Hallelujah! What shall I render? What shall I render? What shall I render to you, O Lord? I will praise your name and shout hallelujah. What shall I render to you, O Lord? You are the Lord, that is your name. You will never know, no, do it anyone. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God, that is your name. You are the Lord, that is your name. You will never see your glory with anyone. Hallelujah. You will never see your glory oh, yes. with anybody. Almighty God, that is your name. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. That is your name. Oh, yes. You will never see your glory with anyone. Hallelujah. You will never see your glory with anybody. Almighty God, that is your name. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. That is your name. You will never share your glory with anyone. Hallelujah. You will never share your glory with anybody. Oh yes. Almighty God, yeah, yeah. that is your name. He has broken the gates of brass and caused the bars of iron in thunder. He has broken the gates. He has broken He has broken the gates of wrath. Hallelujah. It's a miracle walking God It's a miracle walking God It's a miracle walking God 
from the heart. Believe in the Lord for his favor upon your life as you go through this month of March. Let nobody's voice be louder than yours in this destiny changing prayers. Strangers defiling my destiny in the dream. Can you say it loud and clear? You know the Bible said the strangers shall fade away and they shall be afraid out of their closed places. Can you shout it again loud? You are alive. Die in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus' name we pray. Now say this with violence. Arrows of bad luck. Fired against me and my family. Backfire. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray it. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. This prayer will help so many people. Say every battle surrounding my progress. Can I hear the sister shouting it? Is that the Lord that the sisters can shout it? Can I have the brothers shouting it? Everybody together now. Scatter! In the name of Jesus. Scatter the battle. (laughs) 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for another time like this before you. We thank you for your grace, your power, your love, and might. And we thank you for the manifestation of the power of God. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. This morning, lay your hands upon our lives. Open our understanding. Move us from strength to strength. Sir. And from glory to glory. It is written that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Power to run and not be weary. Power to walk and not faint. Receive that power in the name of Jesus. I say receive that power in the name of Jesus. Any blood demon troubling the life of anyone here, hear the word of the Lord. That place where you are hiding in the blood is not your habitation. And so in the name which is above all names, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, Get out of that blood in the name of Jesus. Get out. 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 Light your amen. Roll and turn now. Get out. Get out. Get out of that blood. In the name of Jesus. Father. Baba. Walk into every family present here. Walk to each family 10 generations backward. And erase every satanic instruction. Father, erase them. Delete them. Delete them. Delete them. Delete them. Delete them. Every satanic instruction. Walking against any family here. Let them be deleted in the name of Jesus. Every vulture assigned against your destiny. I kill the vulture now in the name of Jesus. Let every anti-destiny vulture die in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your amen be dynamic now. Any battle that is waiting for anyone in this 2024, let the battles be buried in the name of Jesus. The battles must be buried. They 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 must be buried in the name of Jesus. You and your family members we not board any vehicle going to the mortuary in the name of Jesus Father lay your hands upon your people here and let this man be a month of breakthroughs and testimonies in Jesus mighty name we pray let's have a seat God bless you as you take a Bible. And we look at what I call the greatest tragedy of the human race. The greatest tragedy of the human race. That will take us into some scriptures very quickly. And I want to counsel you to listen very carefully. In James chapter 3, verse 16, James chapter 3, verse 16, 
James 3.16 The greatest tragedy of the human race. James 3.16 For we are envying and strife is there is confusion and every evil work wherever there is envy strife fighting malice the bible says in that place you find confusion and then every evil work all kinds of wicked things will be taking place wherever there is envy and strife please keep that at the back of your mind back to second timothy Chapter 3, verse 2. Second Timothy, chapter 3, verse 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Lovers of their own selves. Covetous. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemous. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy. Verse 2 again. For men, the first vice he mentioned. So if we pick it from verse 1, say so this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. And the first thing he mentioned, say so for men shall be lovers of their own self lovers of their own self. In Proverbs chapter 11 verse 26 Proverbs 11 26 It says this He that withholdeth corn the people shall curse him. But blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. The one that is holding the, the item. People will be using curses on his head. But the one that is giving it out, the blessing will come upon his head. The greatest tragedy and possibly the greatest curse on the human race is in one thing called selfishness. Selfishness. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Because they are lovers of their own selves, it will lead to heavy strife where there will be confusion and every work. Almost every sinful action, almost every sinful action that anyone has ever committed, can be traced back to a, a selfish motive. When we say somebody is selfish, you are 
more concerned about your own welfare and interest and too little or none for others. It's just me, 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 my family, my children, my wife, my husband, me, me, me. That's selfishness. The greatest tragedy of the human race. And practically every sin can be traced to it. The primary source of all the trouble we're facing can be summed up in one word called selfishness. That's why when the Bible was describing the tragedy of the last days, the first thing he mentioned is selfishness. So men shall be lovers of their own sex. Right through the beginning of creation, there is nothing that has harmed the human race than this human heart that is only concerned about itself alone. The selfish human heart is a big problem. God planned that all his creation will be a blessing to others. What is planned met with opposition in heaven when Lucifer entertain the desire to be above everybody. Say, I will exalt myself. So again, it's self. Self. Selfishness. Of all four letter words, self is the worst. Everything that is wrong in this our wicked world can be rooted in the selfishness of man. And this selfishness is the greatest corruption of the human nature. Of all vices that degrade human nature, that degrade human character, selfishness is the worst. An undue love for yourself can lead to the most monstrous crimes that men commit. And it causes greatest misfortunes in families. Because selfishness only seeks for its own pleasure. Its own well-being. Its own advantage. Not having any regard for others. Selfishness is Satan's attempt to create his own kingdom. It's a problem that has plagued men from the beginning of time. Any sin you want to talk about <laughs> has its root in selfishness. Our fundamental problem is selfishness. This is part of why God created marriage. To eradicate our selfishness. So that, so that it won't be about me, 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 me. It will be about we. But even with that, people carry the selfish hearts into marriage. My comfort. My comfort. My comfort. The bedrock of corruption. If you say a nation is corrupt, the bedrock of that corruption is selfishness. What will a man do with one million dollars or one billion dollars he has stolen? What, will, what does he want to eat? What does he want to do with it? When there are others that have been deprived, nations are ruined. When politicians think for themselves first before thinking about anyone else. 
Even those people who are committing suicide. It's selfishness. Because, because, because you are not happy, you don't care what your killing yourself will do to others, so you want to kill yourself. You are a selfish person. Selfishness of the other order. That is why any country that allows abortion is not teaching these people to love. But he wants them to use violence to get anything they want. You went and got pregnant. So because you are selfish, you are thinking about yourself. So you believe the solution is to kill a life. It still boils down to that selfishness. Power is always very dangerous when it is handed over to a selfish man. One of the greatest diseases on earth is to be nobody to anybody. They don't care what happens. Don't care what happens to anybody. It's just me, me, me. This disease is the greatest curse of the human race. The greatest tragedy of the human race. This is, this is a very serious matter. And we therefore as believers, as we go into this month, need to examine ourselves. A foundation of selfishness <coughs> leads to adultery. Adultery. You see, you are an adulterer. You want to satisfy your flesh. You want to please yourself. You don't care what your wife thinks. You don't care what your husband thinks. Your flesh is craving for something. And you are selfish and you want to provide it in detriment of the life of others. A foundation of selfishness leads to fornication. Uncleanness. Hatred. All kinds of envy. Even murders. Drunkenness. Is all as is foundation in Men shall be lovers of their own self. That's why you find very few scanty number of people in the ministry of intercession. Because intercession is not about praying for yourself, it's about praying for others. So many people like that kind of ministry. They don't want to intercede for others. So, so, me, me, I should be praying for some people. I, 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 I need to pray myself. I, I still pray myself. I should not be praying for others. That selfishness plagues men today. And it's the essence of all sins. The tenth commandment is God's warning against harboring an attitude of covetousness, self-seeking, looking out to be number one, and the desire for selfish gain. See what the Ten Commandments says in Exodus chapter 20. Exodus 20. Verse 17. Exodus 20, 17. Thou shalt not covet 
thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservants, nor his maidservants, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. When you are covetous and you want something that belongs to another person to belong to you by force, you are a selfish person. A selfish fool is a person who says, it's nobody's business what I do. Nobody's business what you do. You don't care how you talk to people. Don't care you talk to somebody, the person goes to hang himself. You don't care. Hey, what I do is my business. No. no, our life is interconnected. That's, that's how God made it. The person who lives for himself alone we usually die the same way. If you have ever been to the cemetery during burials, sometimes well, if you go just start and the gate, see them bringing in uh, coffins. Sometimes they bring in some people's coffin. The people that are following them, they are indifferent. Uh, he's waiting for the ceremony to be over. She see the kind of person they are buried. Sometimes they bring in some people. Those following the coffin, I smoke his cigarettes. They are even playing with women there in the cemetery ground. She see the person they are buried. Sometimes they bring us some coffin. Yes, uh, huh. uh, this wicked man is gone. But forever, don't come back. Go. She was the kind of person they are But sometimes they bring you some people. Everybody is crying. They are weeping. So, oh, oh, this person is good. person is God. It's God. It's God. When you see such people, there are people who are not selfish about their lives. A selfish person will usually die the same way. You die like that. This word is give and take. But there are too many people trying to take but not give. Some come to this church now. They, they contribute nothing. <laughs> Money they don't contribute. Group they don't contribute. Nothing they don't do. There are some people now able bodied people who are supposed to be serving the Lord. And they sit at home. I'm an online member. If everybody is online member, who will be here to conduct that wedding for you? Who will be here to conduct the dedication? Who will be here to be praying for those who are troubled? It's selfishness. The tragedy of selfishness is that it cancels your prayers. Cancels your prayers. Cancels. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. If you do not forgive those who trespass against you, so that, that will your father and heaven forgive you your own trespasses. He who lives for himself should be pitied because the person doesn't have very much to live for. And some people carry that selfishness to another level. To another level. 
Many years ago, a young man came there crying. Was crying that there. And they came to fetch me in my office. That time, my family just moved there. And when, when I went there, he was crying. It was difficult to console him. And crying bitterly. At home. Ah. Good, good person is dead. This person is dead. This good person is dead. I said, Who died? Said his wife. What happened? Oh, why they cry? So because one day his own father called all his children to a meeting. All the seven children to a meeting. And he warned them. None of you must be greater than me. Try it. You have a wife that tries it. You are gone. But this man's wife was hard working. And was making it. All of a sudden she screamed from her dream. Screamed the name of the father. Of her husband. And the wife was gone. The man has now moved the selfishness to another level. If we want an increase of Christ in our lives, there must be a decrease of self. A decrease of self. There must be you calling yourself to order. Paul said, but I put my body under. I, not asking God to do it. I put my body under. I bring it under subjection. That is, it is not everything that body is telling you to do. You will listen. You have to say, no, I'm not doing this. So I bring it under subjection. You now say something very terrible. Say, lest at any time after I have preached unto others I myself will be a castaway. Meaning that that your flesh can throw you into hell fire. Even though you are speaking in tongues. Even though you are singing. Even though you are prophesying. Have you not read the Bible? The soul will come to Jesus on the day of judgment. I say, Master, did you not preach in your name? Did you not prophesy in your name? I said, yes, you did. So, but I don't know you. I don't know you. Who are you? You are get out! You workers of iniquity. So a person can be working iniquity and think he's serving God. Half of our troubles come. So we want our way. We want our way. We want our way. And then our way that we want is not what God wants. So we put ourselves into trouble. When you are blowing out other people's candles, <laughs> when you see other people's candles, you are blowing it out. You are blowing out other people's candles, will not make your own candle to shine brighter. At the end of life, all of us will discover that the only things we have lost were those things we were trying to keep. We are trying to keep. We are trying to keep money, keep money, keep, money, keep, money, keep, this, keep this, keep that. At the end of the day, you can't keep anything. For that eternal word of God is sure. Unchangeable. 
We brought nothing into this world. It is certain. We are going to take nothing. Nothing. Out of it. In many places now, if they bury yourself and there is too much expensive clothes on your body, they are coming back to the cemetery to remove it in your body. So technically, a selfish man is a thief. As a pastor, the most miserable people that I know are those who are obsessed with themselves. Obsessed with themselves. By and large, when people keep complaining, complain about this, complain about that, is because you think too much about yourself. When you are constantly thinking only about yourself, only about yourself, our world sinks. Because you only think about yourself. It's me. It's me. It's me. It's me. It's me. And this is a terrible thing. Very, very terrible thing. One day they threw a woman out of the house. A young lady just threw her out of the house. And I met her somewhere. I saw the terrible state in which she was. And she was crying bitterly. All her things were on the streets. This was many years ago. I said, but go and get a room, get a room, get get out of here. Because she didn't look like somebody who could not afford to get a room. Sir, sir, I cannot afford it. So I checked my bag. Fortunately, there was enough money. Give it to her. Leave this street. Leave this street. Go and get a place for yourself. She first of all stood looking at me. Can you hear me now? Say it. Bye bye. Amen. Amen. Can you hear now? Yes or no? Step fast, oh, oh, the Lord never sees his man sees never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh Lord. Great. Is I faithful? Can you hear me now? Yes? Okay. So this lady was homeless. Met her things being thrown into the streets. So I just put my hand in my bag, give her the money. She stood and stared at me for a few minutes. Then she broke down and started crying. I started begging her, why are you crying? She cried and cried and cried. By the time she stopped crying, she said, sir, this is the first time in my life that anybody is doing anything for me free. Free. It's the first time. Shows you how selfish our generation has become. Selfishness. 
is one of the most common faces of pride. Pride is when you are concerned about how the thing is affecting you. It's the center of all that matters to you. Pride. They are insulting me. They are doing this. They are doing that. The self gratification, self seeking. Selfishness stops the flow of blessings into the life of others. Let me ask you a few questions. Before I ask you to pray now, are you insensitive to the suffering of others? Are you excessively angry when everything doesn't go the way you want it to go? Do you have this exaggerated sense of self importance? Do you possess this strong sense of entitlement? Somebody gave you 50,000 gift and you open your mouth and say, ordinary 50,000 ordinary ordinary 50,000 something you did not work for if you are going if you are going to be a daily paid worker laborer or bricklayer and they are going to be paying you maybe 5,000 5, per day you have to work for 10 days to make that money it's ordinary. didn't give me anything it's ordinary 50,000 that's what we're talking about all those sense of entitlement is selfishness I know that my uncle can afford it my uncle can afford it so because he can afford it you feel entitled no you are a selfish person are you here and you have this unreasonable expectation you want to be favorably treated all the time selfishness check yourself do you expect automatic compliance with every expectation you have are you part of those using others to obtain your needs we start, we start planting seed of discords where you walk so this, one, this one is talking about you this one is talking about you so it's like, so you're just causing people to start fighting this is a very serious matter selfishness do you treat your spouse as a sexual object you just see the woman as baby factory and sexual object nothing, nothing else again are you highly critical of others you are unwilling to identify with the needs of other people are you very arrogant hot in attitude selfishness are you that adult that sometimes acts like a spoiled child always demanding to have your own way if things don't go your own way you lose your temper you walk out do you talk about yourself excessively you don't like attending to the need of others you are often very envious of other people are you lazy laziness is selfishness you don't, you don't do it because you want others to do it you don't want to strain yourself you don't want to stress yourself do you cling to a fault just because you don't want to do certain things are you fond of blaming others for your failures or shortcomings are you the kind of believer who don't enjoy giving uh, offering time is not a time that you laugh or smile 
Do you seek to be the center of attraction? Oh, you are here. I'm drinking alcohol. You are spoiling the temple of God. Say it's not much, it's more small. The Bible says you should not pollute the temple of the Most High God. Not destroy the temple of the Most High God. And you are on hard drugs, you're put, putting drugs into your body to destroy that temple. It is selfishness on your part. Do you resent walking at home? Walking at home? A man sits down in the sitting room. He puts his two legs on the table. He's reading this paper. And he has a pregnant wife. This pregnant woman has to go to the kitchen to cook. To pan the arm, prepare a table, put everything on the table. When the man is just watching television, that man is not only selfish but wicked. Are you the kind of person? When something goes wrong, it's always another person's fault. Are you here? Anywhere you are, you expect to be recognized as a superior without even any commensurate achievement. You want to be said, I'm superior. I sometimes find it strange. Sometimes among pastors, you say you are a senior pastor, senior capital letter. And you are in charge of a church. The total offer of that church is six thousand dollars per month. So you say because I am a senior pastor, my salary must be five thousand. How will that church survive? The selfishness. I had to sack one pastor like this. I sent people to go and look at the MFM church. is pastor. Corrugated iron sheet. Benches. No toilet. Yet, he's driving a new Mercedes car to that church. So this one is not a pastor. It's not a pastor. This one is a businessman. This man must be removed from here. This is a very serious matter. And I want you to understand this very well. Are you here? You always require admiration. They must admire me. If nobody tells you how beautiful you look, how beautiful your clothes are, you are very depressed. Are you here? You are very controlling. Or you are financially irresponsible in your family. You don't like to express appreciation to others. You don't open up to anybody. It's, it is indication that is selfishness in your life. The Bible says, Man shall be lovers of themselves. I read the story many years back when, when I was in primary school of a dog who was crossing a bridge. Somebody already gave that dog a very nice bone. So he held the bone, the dog held the bone in the mouth. I was passing on the top of a bridge. But while passing, he looked at the water. He saw another dog in the water with bone. His reflection. And the bone was even larger than the one in his mouth. So he got angry. How this one has larger bone? He opened his mouth. His own bone dropped into the water. 
he had now ended up with nothing. That's, that's what happened to selfish people. You must have heard about dead people. Dead beasts. Dead trees. Dead flowers. But have you ever heard that there is something called the Dead Sea? Yes, there is a sea. They call it Dead Sea. Why do they call it Dead Sea? Because it receives water from various sources, but it gives out nothing. This Dead Sea receives about 5 million tons of water daily. But it doesn't give it out to anybody. Therefore, because it's not giving out water, it's just keeping it. Just keeping it. So the water there is very salty. Very bitter to taste. Oily to touch. And when he touches a place, a place, it leaves a yellow stain. No fish lives in that water. No flower blooms near that water river. No fruit grows on his shores. There is no bird that is sinking in his neighborhood. It is a striking emblem of a selfish life. Dead sea takes but does not give. Takes not give. Very stingy. Hates generosity. What, what is the cure for this kind of thing? The first cure the, the, first, the first way to get out of it, the first care for it is to ensure that you are a friend of God. Surrender your life to Jesus. Second care. You must pray for the spirit of humility. You have to be humble. The third thing you should do you should pray and meditate seriously, deeply on scriptures. Then, before, you must let your affection be on things above. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All the other things shall be added unto you. But because human being is so selfish, say seek ye first the kingdom of God. Then all that things, they are what we call in our local language, Jara. Yes, God, extras. yes. All that things that God gives extra. You can't go to a market now. And you didn't buy anything. Say, give me jara. Say, no, buy, buy something first. So, say, seek ye first. The kingdom of heaven. Then those other things will be added. And then finally, mortify your flesh. Don't allow that flesh to be throwing you here and there. Don't allow it to be controlling your life. You have promised to pray in the night. But Mr. Flesh is saying you are tired. You are tired. Go and sleep. Do it another time. And you listen to him. Trouble. Somebody is saying something you don't like. And Mr. Flush, he said, are you going to keep quiet? Are you the true son of your father for somebody to be insulting you like this? Open your mouth and talk. What is it? No. Mr. Flush, I'm not talking. I'm not talking. I won't say anything. That's how to mortify the discipline. It is a personal desire and determination for you to do so. Personal desire determination. 
My wife was coming home one day and met one of my colleagues fighting another person on the streets. And my wife was say, ah, Daddy, it's okay. So, yeah, okay so, ent ent enter your car, go away, enter your car, go away. Instead of my friend to just enter his car, like mommy was advising him. Send me this Don't ask me to enter my car. Just be praying for me to suppress the spirit of anger. Sit there and start praying that the spirit of anger should be suppressed. I say, Father, person, they just don't want to deal with flesh. It is his personal responsibility. No prayer mommy can pray that will suppress his flesh. It's him that will say, No, Mr. Flesh, keep quiet. I'm not doing it. Just like I used to tell him in the youth church. It is not a sin for a man to have an erection. The sin is the direction where the erection is going. So you have to be very careful. And multiply your flesh which is on earth. Send down revival, Lord. Let it start with be my soul. Holy Ghost revival. Venti Costa. Send down revival. Send down revival, Lord. Let it start with be my soul. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost revival. Send down revival. Send down revival, Lord. There is that within my soul. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost revival. Renting ghost of fire. Somebody touch me. Somebody touch me. Somebody. Touch my soul when I was praying, praying to my father. Somebody touched my soul. Right there where you are. I'd like you to lay your hands on your chest and begin to ask the Lord to break any idol in that heart that will make me dissatisfy heaven. Begin to talk to the Lord now. Break every idol in my heart. Amen. Amen. Now, with a very loud voice. This is a cry to the heavens now. A cry for two things to happen to you. And the louder you pray, the better. The power of resurrection. Power 
of the Holy Ghost overshadow my life. Power of resurrection. Power of the Holy Ghost overshadow my life. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and begin to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. The power, sir, assigned to rubbish my salvation. Clear away. In the name of Jesus. Clear the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, I thank you for your children who have gathered here today. Let your blessing and glory overshadow their lives in the name of Jesus. As you go on into this month, it shall be well with you. No weapon formed against your life shall prosper. You shall trample upon every serpent and scorpion of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, it is well with you. Lord bless you from Zion. Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. You shall go from strength to strength and from glory to glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, all the prayer requests sir, answer them by fire. Let all the writers become testifiers. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And let us share the grace in fellowship. The love of God. The sea fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now forever. Sure, it's a mercy upon us. All the days of our life shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Seven glorious hallelujah. Let's go.